I'm Joey Mae King, international host, model mentor, animal lover. I married Ian King. I was born Ian, motorhead, punk, owner of Victoria Court Hotels. But now, I'm Angelina, still in love with my wife, still into cars, and I'm transgender. Because sometimes the king is a woman. And this is our love story. So I had two Instagram accounts. One was my secret account where I was Angie Mead King. Out of nowhere, Instagram sent notifications to everyone on my friends list. Your friend Ian King is now on Instagram as Angie Mead. Obviously, the people who receive this open the account and they're looking at my little thumbnail photo to figure out like, is this really Ian King or is this someone else hacking my account? A few friends messaged me that you know, certain chat groups are already talking about me. So at one point, I cleaned everything out and like deleted the photo because I was so scared, like I'd be outed. But I spoke to my stepmom and I spoke to Joey and everyone's like, what are you waiting for? Like, what's stopping you? I was already on hormones for six months and I was just thinking like, how am I gonna come out? And then bam, Instagram outs me. And lunchtime that day, I decided to just open my account and it's been crazy ever since. do cook for you, I give you the best part. If I mucked up something, I'll take it. <laughs> you look lovely this morning, honey. Thank you. So do you. Thanks. You're so nice and glowy. It's the so, oil from the yeah. wok. Is that your beauty secret? Because that's what happens every time I'm asked for like, what's your beauty secret? And I'm always having to think of, um, gee, it's pretty simple. It's Maybe not... steaming when you're cooking something. Moisture. And yours is like <laughs> stir fry. I'm very jelly of your skin. I Thank wish you. I could have some hormones too. I think they have some. They have it when a cis woman goes into menopause. Women in their older from. age, their voice drops, they grow hair in weird places. What? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get hair in weird places? Maybe. <laughs> I can't believe how you have lasered everything. And then me, I'm all like, oh, my package ran out. That's seen <laughs> <laughs> I still need to laser more if my legs are my upper lip, and then you're done. But you're still lasering, though. Yes, especially my beard. That's the longest one. And it hurts. When you're sitting there and you know it's going to be painful, and you just try to remember, why am I doing this for? And I personally hate hair. You know I hate hair. I know. That was one of my favorite features of you, sweetheart, mm -hmm. was your beautiful beard. It was so manscaped. It was a full Asian beard. <laughs> a lot of my friends were super jealous. But I will not reminisce. I must say goodbye to the beard. In the beginning, I would always be categorized as metrosexual. I had impeccable style. I like good fitting clothes. I like fashion. I like to look good. He was very much a type that I loved. Yeah, fashionable, Asian, good looking. Yeah, perfect. One evening, uh, Ian had told me that there's one, something that he wanted to share and he was really shy about it. And he said he likes women's underwear. This is not a big deal at all. And really, it's not a big deal. Wearing women's underwear, really, it's just underwear. Joey allowed me to dress at home. As soon as I got home from work, I could wear anything I want. It was tricky because, you know, you're trying to find a balance where I want to experiment, but I don't want to be labeled anything. People keep thinking, oh, so are you a lesbian now, Joey? And it made me think there's still titles, like, so what's your preference sexually? 
And I'm thinking, well, I've always appreciated women, but I've I've never been drawn to them like on a on a sexual level. Like I've never been like. I'm not the expert on these things. I'm not. But then again, are you a lesbian? You know, you're married to a woman, so you're the lesbian. Whatever. There should be different terms. You're a trans lesbian woman. I'd like to say yes, I, I think I am because you like women. Yes, I'm not attracted or turned on by men. Mm -hmm. It's just it's confusing. Well, it, it's a broad rainbow, as they say, right? Life is easy when you're a dog. My, my understanding of the word transgender is basically somebody who chooses to change themselves physically so that their physical appearance matches more how they feel inside. Physically, sila yung mga nagpapalit ng ng ano ng ng kanilang kasarian. Secretly, the more I tried things, the more it's like, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna stop. This is the stage where it's just cross-dressing, so it feels like it's, you know, something private we share, and I think that's what it became, which is something for Ian and I. Every time I got into the persona of Angie, when I removed the makeup, when I removed the pretty things, even like the happiness goes away, and then I see Ian again in the mirror. That's when it like. The reality sinks in of like, you can't have this, this is fantasy. I am i don't believe I'm a conservative woman. Then when Ian told me, how would you feel if I lived my life like this daily? I think that's when, like if you're driving a car and you slam on the brakes in the middle of the road, you just, yeah, it's just like this big screech and silence. It was a difficult process because I'm thinking, hang on, this is just this is just a fun thing that we do together, right? It was just really wild, uh, and I was like, okay, I can't do this. I don't think I can continue. I don't think that's where I can be. So that caused a lot of also mental dilemma. She had the man that she always wanted, and then now the whole image of her, I guess her happy ending, was being questioned. What's, what's wrong with me? I felt like I was in a dark pit, a, a real dark pit of negative emotions. And I just kept beating myself up. Why am I reacting this way when I was part of the beautification and that's okay with me? Then what's what's happening to me? Why am I not able to accept the full package of transition? So I was hitting a wall. That was when I realized Ian changing into Angie represented a form of abandonment, hence why I was going through self-destruction. The moment I understood this and what I was doing and was able to forgive why I was doing this to myself, um, to my spouse, uh, things started clicking. Um, if, if given the chance, I would come out to Joey again and again and again. The regret would have been not trying. The regret would have been not coming out, not seeing if this person can accept my coming out. You know, the feeling of having love and support from one of the most important people in my life, it's, it's huge. It, it gives you confidence, it makes you feel secure, it makes you feel safe, you know, it makes you feel loved. It is. It's because of the love that Ian had uh, for me. I thought to myself, my goodness, um, this is someone I don't want to lose. This is someone that I really selfishly want to have in my life. When we go to bed, I'll be in a nighty, <laughs> and Joey's in like tattered You're boxers that. You're with them that. bacon bacon shirts. What? <laughs> I don't wear any bacon like ratty tops. I think recently with uh, you coming out, there's no hesitation. Yes, to go shopping for anything. You can go out and shop. It doesn't matter. And we can avoid all the male stuff. You don't want to look at the men's side. No. 
there could be some things that fit better. No. Why are you so hesitant, you know? Just you, because. Just like, embrace comfort. Now that I can chop on this side, I'd chop on this side. It's taken so long for me to get to this point. Why would I want to go back to getting menswear? What I'm trying to encourage is that clothes can help enhance you, but they don't really make you. So to be open, to be gender fluid, but she's going to be defiant. She's going to get whatever she wants in the women's section. So I'm like, okay, zip mouth. You see so many clothes and you think they're just, just right, but then the reality is the fit isn't always complimenting. One day, I'm going to get a shirt that's from the men's department and she won't know. <laughs> No. Strict. Everything is anchored on Joey's approval because she does know what looks good in people. Yeah, it looks so nice in the mannequin. Yeah, yeah, I... Actually, no, I don't really feel that. Um, there. How many pussy bows <laughs> can one person it's purple. have? purple. Earlier on in my cross-dressing years, I had no fashion sense. You had way too many corsets. And sometimes if we had a friend in our room and if that door was open... They would think Joey oh, would be the kinkiest you're woman You're so kinky, ever. Joey! That's why you <laughs> Not guys... Not knowing that it's all my clothes. Yeah, that's why you guys, you guys are so cute. Joey Pala, you're so kinky. And I'm like... <laughs> I always explain it to friends. It's like having a teenage daughter. You just know what works, but the teenage daughter doesn't yet. So, babe, you know why I always like choosing V-necks? Because it helps break up the proportions. <laughs> Not exactly break up the proportion, but, but it's it more complementing for a broad shoulder. Yeah, no, this... it helps diffuse the, the width by creating a draw point, which is down there. And, yeah. So proud of this. I really like this dress from you. Can you just give it a try while we're here? Experience it. I remember the first shopping trip Joe took me to. I was so nervous, like my heart rate was just like a million miles a minute. It was like the scene in The Danish Girl where you see Eddie Redmayne grabbing the dress and the stockings and you can see the, the emotion in his face, like the satisfaction, like it was just such a wonderful feeling, both nerve wracking and rewarding all at the same time. First time we do you know er together. earlier that was our first time fitting together yes. in a store in a mall. It yeah. felt like it was a private shopping day. Yeah. Thank you. I think other trans women would be super jealous with our relationship because she's my stylist, she's my um, photographer, she's my makeup artist, she'll help me <laughs> pose, and then like she's my model mentor because she'll help me walk. <laughs> it's been amazing that I found a partner like Joe because. It just complements exactly the things I want where I'm not good at. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. I enjoy it. You're a shopping demon. <laughs> the romantic relationship is, you know, having two people uh, share the same interests. And, and, of course, they're romantically attracted to each other, physically, emotionally. It's a companionship with someone else, being together. It's a bond between two people wherein they can trust each other and they can share anything and they enjoy each other's company. A romantic relationship for me is the connection of similarities. It's not just labeling yourself as boyfriend and girlfriend. It's actually having the same mentality and the same goals for your future lives. <laughs> Cars are my passion. I love drifting. I live for speed. So today we are going to my car shop, Carporn Racing. We actually have a new location that we just moved into. Hey Jed. Hey, how are you? Good, I need you to update me. What's happening today? All right, so 
for today, actually, we're about to test the P1 coding, the, the product we're about to launch. So I was telling Joey she's the guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Hopefully it comes out well or else she's gonna end up throwing things at me. I know, she's like, I'm the <laughs> guinea pig again. I'm like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I basically am the assistant general manager. I help um, bring the team together and make sure that it's carried out properly. I've known about Angie in the car world in the Philippines, which is really small. The people who are good and who race a lot, you, you hear about them. He was a pretty hardcore guy when it came to drifting cars and pushing the limits, just building wacky projects, which is sort of what got me uh, to apply in car form. Where do you get a boss to tell you to chop up a Porsche or a Ferrari and, and, and be creative? Um, we've also gone through your, the Porsche of um, ABBA, the 911, and um, um, unfortunately we've seen some issues with the oil leaking. The leaks are coming from, from the exhaust manifold. Don't worry, we'll get it right for carport. All right, let's go around. All right, All right let's do this. Carport racing started when I got to the point where most of the car shops I would visit wouldn't do the work that I wanted or was charging me like exorbitant amounts to get the stuff done. You know that saying where find something you love and it will never feel like work? That's how it feels for me when I'm playing with cars or fixing someone else's car. On a normal basis, you know, I go in to check on work and look at the cars that are being done. Basically, when I'm here, I'm very hands-on. This one, two, and then right under, look. That looks like gearbox though there. I like tackling projects that most shops say no to. And for me, that's a great challenge. Like, it gets my brain moving, like, okay, let's figure this out. The seals and stuff could be binded, and you yeah. just gotta run the motor. Ah, my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Need a ponytail. But I guess the difference is my hair gets in the way and I don't want to chip my nails. Yeah, Besides that, I, I do everything. More than doing that, shall I kill her? That's why we should roll it out so we can idle it. I want to warm her up. Okay. We should bring her out because we're going to suffocate. A greater satisfaction is seeing the clients when they pick up the car and they're, they're super happy with what we've done and watching them drive off and posting their cars and saying like, you know, we did an awesome job. It's always good to catch up with our friends and family. As the years have gone by, they've been really supportive, so they really are vital to our own relationship. I will always cook for them. We're going to stack this. I enjoy seeing them enjoy the food. Super quick steak, it's very thin, so I'm just going to time it just to be sure because it seems super hot. After a stressful day at work, I want to think about something totally different. That's where cooking comes in, where I feel relaxed when I'm preparing dishes. He's one of my best friends and also one of my oldest friends. I've been friends with Ian for 20 years, more or less. Kim handles the business for walk to go but I have where he watches and basically critiques all the staff. People call us the inseparable duo because we work together, we hang out together, we do everything together. We build cars together, we build businesses together. Growing up with Ian back then, he was the epitome of an alpha male, a car guy, a guy who likes uh, extreme sports. That's why when 2009 he came forward, we were all surprised, to say the least, actually. We had decided to um, organize one of my birthday parties and I got to dress up for that. But it was like a cross-dressing stage still. And I think when the boys came in, they had to drink right away and I think they just saw it still like it's a costume. He invited us over for dinner and said, I have something to tell you guys. And so we were all waiting in the living room 
wondering what's going on. And he comes down in a dress. It was a bit confusing, you know, to process that, okay, my best friend's a cross-dresser. There was this one Halloween that came back to mind where he dressed up as a geisha. He was in character, covering his face and the movement, and, you know, he had a fan, and <laughs> We even went out clubbing, and he was still in character as a geisha, and I thought, you really enjoyed yourself. He's still the same person I've known all my life, you know, just in heels now and makeup. <laughs> I was actually devastated, really. I was really sad. In fact, the whole party, I couldn't look at him in his eyes and couldn't really talk to him straight because I was so... It was so awkward for me. Ian or Angie is like my older brother. He, she was more of an older brother to me than my actual brother. And then this person just comes to you all of a sudden and say, hey, I'm going to be a girl. It's like, really? Like, this is... Weird. Uh, I'm making mixed veg veggies for your mom. Kim in general had such a big struggle accepting everything because he saw me as his older brother and it was very difficult for him to grasp the idea that the older brother wants to become the older sister. It took me a few years for me to really accept it and get used to it. Majority of my staff that I asked said something in common. Okay lang sir, mabait naman si Sir Ian eh. So then I realized that hey, because this person is very kind, respects other people, is charitable, loves helping other people. So I think a lot of people sort of like accept it now. Oh, it's okay. I think I was close-minded at the time. He's your brother at the end of the day. Doesn't matter what he's into, what he wants to be. He's your brother. Nothing changes. Your relationship doesn't change. When I did come out, I thought I would lose a few more friends, but we're still all friends still today. Honestly, I'm really happy that they still considered me as one of the bros, even though I'm transitioning. Now that everything's out and I get to be me, they're super supportive, so it's, it's been awesome. So what was the highlight of the trip? Meeting Caitlin. Be the yeah. best, right? Yeah, right. Weirdly enough, like being trans, I get to meet other trans people way easier, and especially like, like Caitlin Jenner, where like who am I to be having lunch with this person who is like ultra famous? Question: Caitlin, good person? Super nice. Down to it? Weird. Weirdly enough. Really? Yeah. So she's a car person. Yeah. She ha owns a purple Porsche, so naturally she gravitated to Angel's yeah. car. And then look up, who owns this car? And this one made you like starstruck. <laughs> I do. I think she's asking more about the car. And then Angel's was like, um, I recently came out. So Caitlin was like, oh, you know, you know, good for you. And and I'm just watching this process. It's like, here, can I have your number? Amazingly, she's so down to earth and super friendly, which caught me off guard because obviously Hollywood portrays people in many different ways. And you're thinking like, you're sitting with an, an award-winning Olympian and you know, she's gorgeous and you're just like, amazing. I'm like, ah, is this real? Like pinch myself, like, okay, I feel that it's real. <laughs> When she joined us that morning, I said, um, I go, Caitlin, can I ask you a, a personal style question? And she was like, I asked, so where do you shop for your shoes? And she, and she asked me, what size is she? I go, she's 12. And she was, oh, I wish I was a 12. I'm a 13. <laughs> and she just said, can I? I get tired of telling my story. And it's nice that my friends all know the story. So they get to be an advocate and inform other people about what transgender is. So I was born a boy, obviously. Um, when my mom was pregnant with me, she thought I was a girl. So they had a female name already. There wasn't any ultrasound back then. So when the doctor pulled me out and said like, it's a boy, and she's like, no. And he's like, why? It's okay. <laughs> so you know, that was the start of everything. My mom left when I was two. So it was just basically me, my brother, and my dad. Growing up in an alpha male environment, it was very hard for me because here I am, I want to be soft and feminine, but I can't. 
I couldn't express certain things. Like I couldn't say to a girl like she had nice shoes or like her makeup was amazing without coming off like a weirdo. My biggest fear when I came out was hurting the people I love. It was very difficult for my dad to wrap around it and I was very worried about his reputation. He would have girlfriends all the time. And I even had an impression that he was a playboy. I told him literally over dinner, like, I like women's clothing. There was some resistance, but my stepmom started defending me. You know, you cannot impose what you want on other people, regardless if your son or if it's your daughter. You just have to accept them and love them for what they are and who they are. When the father was sick in Germany, he was in a coma for two months and he was in a rehab hospital for another two months and Angie was with me the whole time. And I was telling the father that, you know, if that was a boy, he will not be here with you for four months. That's, that's the woman's side of, you know, Ian. I kept showing to the father that this is Angie. The earlier that you accept this, the better for you, because at the end of the day, I said, he will be Angie. He told me that I saw him growing up as a boy, and so it's harder for me. But then he said, but I will accept it. Give me time. Only bits and scattered pieces remain from the Augusta Westland chopper that crashed in Mount Makulot in Batangas yesterday, killing the pilot, Captain Felicissimo Taborlupa Jr., and one of his passengers, Archie King. King, a prominent businessman who owns a chain of motels. Yeah, and I was super heartbroken when I signed his death certificate. My dad's dead. It was so devastating because he died also on my brother's birthday. How are you ever going to celebrate that birthday knowing that one of your most loved people passed away? His last few messages to me was, I know you're going through a hard time, but I just don't want you to hurt yourself. When he had passed away, that's when I realized like life is definitely too short. And that's when I, I took it seriously and I started transitioning. You're wearing your hair long today? Yes. You're not putting sticky. it back? Yeah. Don't you love that? Is yeah. there anything that you you now realize that makeup can be a bit of a pain it in the butt? It looks great, but it's a pain. It's, it's added about an hour before I start my day. What I don't like about you in makeup is the lip gloss. Oh. Because it's yucky. But I think men have said that before, that like when they kiss a girl, they it's get like, all like, why yeah, so sticky? yeah, it looks so good. Like your lips look luscious but and sexy, like, but mm, in reality, mm. it's like, ew. <laughs> so that's how I feel when I kiss you, sweetheart, more like, ew. But then sometimes, like if you have a nice lip color, I can also like add on by kissing you and then I can just add it on and rub <laughs> it. So, you know, that's also good too. Or, or extra lip balm. <laughs> it's like I have dry lips. And then just rub it. <laughs> okay, well, before I put this on, I keep morning kiss. Mm. Okay, let me put it on. Weirdly enough, when I came out, my followers are 85% women and they follow because they want to see like love photos, they want to see beauty photos, they want to see fashion photos. It's crazy, like when did being trans become cool? But it sort of gave me hope, you know, that people could change, people can accept. You know, we're still trying to figure out like what we did right so we can share it with other people. I put a little bit of nude and then just a little bit of color and this should last you. Okay. Pack a lip. Can I see? <laughs> okay, you're done. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, <tell> me. <laughs> mom, <your> wife. <laughs> Do people get so weird out when when I say that? When you say wifey? Yeah, I, like when that? I say wife, I get the odd like, oh, I get the odd... Some people aren't cool with that. But I do not like saying partner. I spouse. like saying spouse. Thank God for the word spouse. All right. I saw the other day you reacted to one of the comments on my Instagram. Which one? <laughs> it, was, it was a vicious one. Oh. I get the rude comments like gross or um, you shouldn't be doing this. Sometimes when I'm tagged, sweetheart, or I see your Instagram and I'll see something that annoys the shit out of me. I don't even reply anymore. Do you just let it be like, or maybe you don't see them? No, no, I, I do you... go through them, but I just ignore it and like try to act cool. Well, it bugs me. 
obviously. <laughs> and I always have to have like the last say. Once in a while, I will reply, but I don't get as riled up as you. You like the, you like the attack. I don't know if I like that. I what the first thing is like I'm gonna get you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will get back at you, but I will do it in a way where I try not to be as hateful, and I'll make it uh, fact based. Fact based, equal ground. The ones that I really hate are the the judgmental ones. Full on ignorant ones. I know, like the judgmental ones are. You shouldn't get riled up about. Yeah, that's true. I'll work that out with my therapist for my next session. I'm not surprised that I get upset over these things. Um, it, I do think it's in my personality. Even when I was younger, like if I saw someone being bullied, I can go in and argue or fight or defend someone. I'll do it. I just do need to be reined back, though, like a wild cat. Just put water on me. <laughs> so this year, I got myself a car. You know, my most favorite car ever. I trust her when it comes to cars, but my car may disappear and have things done to it. Today, I get to see what they've done with her and also see the brand new car shop too. So what do you think? Impressive, it's massive. The shop's very busy today. We're renovating the back area. Is it? Yes, your car is right here. So we're gonna do the bodywork first. After that, we're gonna get to the suspension, the wheels, the grill, and then the supercharger. Okay, and then remember I wanted the lights to be blue. Yes, uh, I need to order those. They haven't arrived. <laughs> be your pesky client. <laughs> All right. Hello, baby. So you're actually gonna be the first to use our paint booth. Oh, really? Yes, this, is our, yes, this is our first demo car. Awesome. Okay. And over here is my baby. The black man, though. This is my personal Batmobile. The first prototype was done, and we now copied it in carbon fiber. Wow, the carbon fiber looks sick. I can't wait to get her back running and build another one. The black man, though, is based off a C6 Corvette, which was actually my dad's car. Right is that the whole shop? That's the whole shop. Castle. Oh my god, I love this so much. The bishop, of course, the queen. <laughs> I love this, this is the king? genius. Obviously with this one, it's just a lot of recycling old parts and being creative in how you interpret, right? So cool. But this one's queen, this one's king. Uh -huh. well, I guess you can make it either way. So babe, I got an invite to speak in a women's business Forum. Wait, okay. women like who are in business? Have... It was in a, a business forum for women. Yeah, I feel like I'm not ready. What if I get questioned about lower pay or inequality and you know stuff I have no experience over? I feel obviously that women will discriminate me because I'm not a woman. I'm not a real woman for them. So I'm already not being a businesswoman myself, but to see you up there, I would feel a little insulted. Sometimes with invites like this, there are situations where they're just going to take advantage of your recent fame and... I think I understand that. Wow, I don't know, owe anyone anything and yet you're treated like public property. Yeah, but I, like a lot of people don't see that side of being famous where people are trying to get handouts and freebies. Some of them I just have no reply to anymore. Well, there's a lot of people that you replied to because I think you were pretty overwhelmed with the support and you wanted to let everyone know. You still had the you want to be liked issue. Here I am. I feel like I have this platform where I can use my status of who I am to empower other women. And now having a trans woman as my spouse it also goes there too. I need to also help empower my own spouse that you are more than just a pretty face. Being a beacon of inspiration, especially for LGBT community, you know that you may be asked to represent. Well, I don't want to be politically involved yet, especially if I'm figuring myself out. Because... I don't know if I need all that responsibility. I've only been out for six months. I've gotten offers magazine covers, newspaper articles, 
but it made sense when you told me don't let them capture you just because of this like trance is in right now and it's it's a topic that people want to feature and <laughs> why are you laughing at me because you're like that now because i've pretty much drilled it in your head first of all you were bright eyed of course with I mean, everything it's it, i wanted it to was an put a noose around your neck and throw you off a cliff for being so naive and i just think that sometimes people could take advantage of that and change it around to something that you wish you didn't want to say i'm basically like a mom slapping your wrist you're my no. manager <laughs> yeah but you didn't like it well I was flattered, definitely flattered that they offered me. Babe, they're using pegs of Caitlyn you Jenner. You just came out and... Yeah, are you Caitlyn Jenner? No, I'm not. You're not Caitlyn Jenner. I know. I just felt that everyone's riding on the roar of you. And then I hate having to do this to you like some freaking know-it-all. What you're going through is personal. So you need to think of like where you're going to share this. The most monumental like magazine would be like time. Time magazine, some random magazine. Time magazine, magazine. Which one's louder? You tell me. You. <laughs> Why are you so angry? Because <laughs> it's a so <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I get upset at the audacity of some people thinking that they can use it as an exploitive stage. For now, it's just like I just got here. I want to figure it out before I become more public. So that's what that's where we're going at right now. We're going to the Philippine Art Cross today and it's my first time to compete in a long time. So it's interesting. <laughs> when I started drifting and getting into cars, this is the first sport we got into. When I came out, one of my biggest worries was I couldn't do the things that I love doing. I haven't shown myself to this, this general public. It's interesting because you can see everyone looking like... <laughs> that was me, Possible. I'd drive, I would, I would demolish. Demolish. Every car. Yes, you would. You know, as, as with any motorsports event, because it's predominantly male. There's that first wave of jitters. I say hi to everybody, I wave because I know they're looking and if they smile back, then everything's fine. You know, they hear about it, but seeing, I guess seeing me in, in live is different for everybody. The people who know me do come up and say hi and the people who don't know me come up to get a photo. So it's been good. What do you want me to do today? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to do <laughs> today? Like, oh, I just want to pick you up and hug you. And you'll bite me. I've always wanted to have goats, but anything that will entertain me besides the screeching sounds of cars um, is always a nice, you know, breeze of fresh air. <laughs> that was cute. That was the best part of the day. I have a question. For you. Yes. There's no bathroom. So when you need a pee break, because you can't go into the bushes and pee anymore. Watch me. <laughs> well, technically you could stand, but like, would you still do that? No, I'd rather have a bathroom. Right. Okay. We can get driven out. Things that I'm scared of. The most basic thing: the women's bathroom. I'm scared to get into a confrontation with a woman. And, you know, weirdly enough, I'm also scared to go into the male bathroom because I look different already. It's just like, dear God, where can I go just to pee? <laughs> yeah, like, I look for a handicapped bathroom most of the time when it's possible. Did you squat or did you stand in the... <laughs> did you squat? Confidential. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. Like, every time there's an event that's like this where the bathroom is not available. We, we will take the extra. We will bring a mobile home next time so that we have a bathroom following us. <laughs> go, go, go! If you want to learn how to control your car, join an autocross track. You 
can bring a stock car all the way up to a really modified car. It's a timed event, so you go through gates. If you hit a cone, it's a five second penalty, and if you don't do an obstacle, it's like a 10 second penalty. So you actually just race against yourself. Just you try to beat your time. The next round, you try to beat your time again. Those cones are 180 turn there. So you get a whip. Bah. If you gotta switch direction, break, 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 key break. I'll give you and Gabe. Sabay na. Oh, I'll give you the two runs. Uh oh. Para hindi ka na po. Uwi na kami. Tagal. Thank you, Danny. You know what? For me now, on it's just more of having fun. Yeah. I have Alana low expectations. I just want to drive. Win it so we can go home. Go home so I can eat and sleep. I knew you were gonna kill it, babe. Like, done. Over and out. Everyone can go home now. Thank you. Angie King's here. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we go home now? What if my partner became transgender? Uh, I'd have to cross that bridge when I get there. No, I will not stay in a relationship. I don't think it's possible for transgender people to fall in love with the opposite sex anymore. First, um, masaktan ko ako. Pero because I love her, so I want her to be free. Pero when pag sinabi niya po sa akin na um, kahit ganon siya, pero gusto niya parin ako makasama, so may tasaman ko parin. I would still uh, uh, <laughs> accept him and yeah, I'd, I'd be happy. Yeah, like Joey Mead and Ian King. <laughs> when they did come out as, and, and together as a couple, the reception that they received was amazing, you know? And even as friends, everybody felt it and it was very positive. And I guess you kind of have a fear if there's going to be a lot of negativity. Yeah, a lot of backlash, for example. For them, that didn't really happen. And for sure, one factor is that Joey and Angie did it together, working through it as a married couple, doing it with their partner, their life partner, you know? We were engaged for three years. Do you remember you also proposed to me? Yes, because, because we had this whole conversation like, would you have proposed to me? Exactly. It's like you did the woman thing of like, would you have proposed to me? I'm like, I would if you gave me time, but you dropped the gun and you proposed to me. And Joe just mimed, mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm like, okay. And How did you know that I, that I was asking you to marry me? Just for fun? Um, it was like, me. I could have been saying, yeah. can you <laughs> wash my hand? Or <laughs> well, when, when I had asked you to move in, Two weeks after we were dating, I already knew like this is someone I want to spend my life with. So I haven't seen their relationship 
better, in fact. The support of Joey for Angie through this process, and I'm first-hand witness to it, uh, it's been ridiculous. It's like, I am a woman, and I, I do not know if I will be able to do that. If my partner would turn into a woman, maybe I, my, my first reaction would be like, I'm out the door. So, and I'm, I, I, I admire Joey for what she's doing. I salute her for that. I've never seen Angie happier at any point in his life. I think as long as they've got love for each other, you know, regardless of what the definitions are, those don't matter, you know. All that matters is that they love each other. I don't know anybody, any couple that has their kind of love story, you know, to be able to go through the transformation and to get stronger because of it. Their love story is, is beautiful. It's everything that you would want your love to be. It's everything that you would want your marriage to be, to find this partner who's going to work through life with you at every step of the way with the utmost, you know, respect and compassion. And yeah, they, they, they found each other and I, you know, I just, I can't wait for what the future holds for them. Normally when you come out, your family disowns you, your wife divorces you, you get fired from work. I'm in the, the luckier part of any trans person's lifestyle. Make it work, honey. Thank you. You know, early on, I had the support of my spouse. I had the support of my main family. I had the support of my immediate friends. And now with the whole social media, I have the support of like my social media. I'm not doing this to please anyone but myself. This makes me happy. And as I've come out now and everything's normalizing and it just feels like a dream. I don't see my life without this human being. I really love, I, I really love her. And um, I knew that that's all I need. And I'm fulfilled. Yes. I'm so proud of this. Like, I can't wait to see what happens through the few years that are coming ahead.